the Abbott and Costello program, starring Bud Abbott and Lou Costello, brought to you by Camel, the cigarette of costlier, properly aged tobacco. The Abbott and Costello program, with the modern rhythm of Will Osborne and his orchestra, Iris Adrian, our singing star Connie Haynes, and spotlighting that chunky, chubby little cherub, who went caught throwing eggs in the electric fan because he heard his Uncle Artie Stebbins liked his eggs scrambled, calmly said, I'm a bad boy! Do you realize that I've been looking all over town for you? What are you doing in this beauty parlor? Ah, this is my beauty parlor, Abbott. What do you mean? I made up my mind that I was going to start off the new year a success. Yes. So I bought it, see? That's my name on the window. Louis A. Costello. Louis A. Costello? What mm-hmm. does the A stand for? Ah, that stands for my middle name, Atomic Bomb. <laughs> Your middle name is Atomic Bomb? Oh, yeah. The day I was born, my father took one look at me and blew up. No. <laughs> Please, Costello, talk sense. How can a dummy like you run a beauty shop? Oh, I've got a lot of business with my new slogan, Abbott. See, see it there on the wall? What does it say? I'm going to read it. Louis Costello removes all wrinkles from your sister, your puppy, your mummy. I take the wrinkles out of your face and drop them down to your tummy. Oh. <laughs> I think the poem is bummy. Bummy, yes, yes. <laughs> this is the silliest thing I've ever heard of. <laughs> <laughs> you're, you're no beauty expert. What's the matter with you? Oh, no. I just concocted a new hair grower, Abbott. It's wonderful. Now, nah, now, nah, don't hand me that stuff. There's no preparation that can grow hair. Oh, all I know is I spilled some on my cat last night. And what happened? We got the only cat in Hollywood that looks like Jerry Colonna. Oh, <laughs> Hey, Abbott, this stuff will even grow hair on a billiard ball. Does it really work? Yeah, but it sure slows up the game. <laughs> Costello, why did you open up this beauty parlor without my wife's advice? Huh? You, you, why did you open this up without my wife's advice? You know that my wife is an expert uh, beautician. Didn't you ever see my wife waving her hair? No, but I saw her shaking it out the window. I, uh, I'll stop that. <laughs> Never mind that. Your wife, Barbara Fritchie. Never mind that. <laughs> shaking it out the window. Yes, yes, yes. My wife is also an expert at facial massage. Mm. Every morning she, she massages her face with the juice of a lemon. I wondered what gave her that sour push. Hey, 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 Costello. Now, now. I resent that, Costello. People have told me that my wife resembles Veronica Lee. Yeah, she wears her nose over one eye. She does. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. Costello. <laughs> I'm, I'm insulting your wife good tonight. Well, I'll talk to you after the program. Mm. Costello, I can tell you that you know absolutely nothing about running a beauty shop. Look, suppose a woman came in here right now and asked for a shampoo. Sham what? Uh, uh, poo, poo. Poo, poo to your mouth. Look, 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 look. look. Uh, how would you give a, a hen a rinse? How would I what? How would you give a hen a rinse? I'd take the hen and give her a pail of water. No, 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 you idiot. I, I didn't say hen. I said henna. Henna is a, a shade of a hair. Uh, what kind of shade does your girl have? I don't know. She never pulls it down. I, no, 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 no. Henna is a color. For example, your girlfriend has henna colored hair. She's Titian. She's what? Your girlfriend is Titian. No, she ain't. She quit Titian when she was a baby. <laughs> She's got all her teeth. Oh, teeth. Yeah, she, she cleans her teeth every night with toothpaste. There you go. With that. <laughs> Who writes this stuff? Never mind that stuff. <laughs> Look, uh, <laughs> there's all that silly talk of yours. Costello, you'll never get a customer to come to this beauty shop. Oh, yes, I will. Have no, it. you won't. Yes, I'm sending out these wonderful pictures. Just look at them, Abbott. It. It's a picture of Monty Willie in a nightshirt. Oh, you dope. <laughs> Those are calendars for the new year. That old man is father time. Oh, is that father time? Sure. You see, he's got a long white beard, and that thing he's holding is a sickle. Do you know what a sickle is for? Sure, to cut his beard. Uh, no, 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 no. Oh, pay no. Well, pay no attention to me. Whenever you see father time, you'll find the old man's sickle. Oh, the old man's sickle? Certainly. What did he call a doctor? Look, Costello, Well, please. they shouldn't let the old man run around sickle, no, Abbott. No, no, He's no, liable no. to catch the hoople cockle. No, no, I don't mean that way. That could develop in the split the cockle. No, 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 no. What are you talking You'll wind up in the hospital. No, 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 Costello. The sickle I'm talking about. old man is Will you listen to me, please? Uh, look, look, uh, Costello, the sickle I'm talking about. That's a cockle is off. But you don't know what I'm talking about. That's a bird, Jermacle. But, Lou, please. The sickle I'm talking about is a scythe. 
See? The old man is holding his scythe. Well, if he's holding his scythe, then, then uh, that must be the scythe he's sickle on. No, no. <laughs> what are you talking about, please? Well, you said if he was sickle, he was holding his scythe. If he's, if he's sickle on his right side, that could be very dangerous. He might have a pen to sickle. Oh, look, uh, <laughs> please, Costello. Father Time and his sickle represent the old year. And this little baby picture alongside of him on the calendar is the new year. Oh, he's a cute little baby, Abbott. But he certainly wears expensive clothes. Expensive clothes? Look at the price tag on his diaper. 1946. Uh, 1946 is the new year. What's wrong with you, Costello? Huh? 1946 is the new year. And Father Time is the old year. Now, next Monday night, we ring out the old man and... Wait a minute, wait a minute. Why ring out the old man? Yeah. No, 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 all right, never mind. Look, I'll tell you what we do. No, look, I... Please, just keep quiet. I'll tell you what we do. I give up everything. You understand? I give up too, kid. All right, all right. Just give up. Just don't say over. You're the senses. They should give up too. Look, I don't know why I always waste time with you. I- I'm going home. Oh, Abbott, please don't go. I want you to try my new hair cutting machine. Just stick your head in here, and I'll turn it on. Go ahead. Hey, Abbott, this machine is wonderful. It changes your whole appearance. What do you mean, change my whole appearance? Uh, what did you do to my head? Oh, I just brought out the natural brilliance. Uh, would you say I'm no longer a blonde? No, I wouldn't say that. Would you say I was a redhead? No, I wouldn't say that either. W- would you say I was a brunette? Definitely not. Then for heaven's sakes, who, what would you call me? Hello, Baldy. Hello, Baldy. <laughs> thank you, Lou. And now a brief transition from wit to wisdom as our imaginary time machine takes us back to ancient Greece and a wise old man named Aesop. Experience is the best. Teacher. Yes, experience is the best teacher, as Aesop said. When cigarettes were scarce, most smokers took what they could get. One day, one brand, another day, some other brand. What did that experience teach? Well, actions speak louder than words. Yes, actions speak louder than words, said Aesop. And the actions of smokers today speak louder than any words about any cigarette. For after more experience with different brands than ever before... More smokers are asking for camels than ever before. C-A-M-E-L-S. Camels are the choice, for experience is the best teacher. <laughs> Will Osborne and the Camel Orchestra bring us How Deep is the Ocean? Ladies' hair in buns. Yes, I do. What do you do with all the crumbs? <laughs> hey, that's a very funny joke. I think I'll pull it on Abbott. Hey, Abbott, do you do up ladies' hair in buns? No, I always put it right in their hair. Now, what am I going to do with the crumbs? <laughs> <laughs> oh, you're stuck, aren't you? No, I can always give the crumbs to the rat. <laughs> Look, why don't you cut out these stale jokes and get busy and clean up this place? Throw those dirty towels in that hamper over there. Okay. <laughs> Costello. Costello, what happened? What kind of towels were those? Cannon towels. <laughs> hey, I think that one over with a bang, didn't it? <laughs> oh, let me out of here. Oh, let me out of here. I've got to get out of here. Please let me out of here so I can play with those other little rabbits. Hey, who are you? Oh, just a little ingrown hare. <laughs> <laughs> that guy looked as... Well, that guy looked as dumb as a rabbit. And he does it good, too, doesn't he? 
At least dumber than a rabbit. A rabbit knows his arithmetic. Uh, yeah, surely. Uh, is this a beauty shop? Yeah, yes, it is. Well, save me a beauty for 8 o'clock, huh? <laughs> hey, you know, I passed your house last night and I saw the Christmas tree lit up on the porch. Oh, the tree is in the living room. That was me. <laughs> Costello, what kind of a place is this? You haven't had a customer today. Oh, hey, Abbott, look who's coming across the street. It's the actress, Bessie May Mucho. <laughs> Hello, boy. I just dropped in to congratulate you on the opening of your new shop. I think it's just too, too enchanting. Yes, yes, it's Devine. <laughs> I'd like to make an appointment for Saturday afternoon. So, Saturday afternoon? Ah, yes, Abby, you know what Saturday is. That's the day after Fru Day. <laughs> and the day before Soon Day. Yes, I'm going to see the big football classic. New Year's Day out at Pasadena. Oh, yes, Pasadena, lovely place. That's the home of the Rose Bowl. <laughs> I could have said something now. I can hardly wait to see all Obama play. Are you betting on all Obama? No, I'm putting all my Mooney on the Trujans. <laughs> oh, Mr. Costello, you are the cutest man. You make me feel so romantic. Oh, yeah. I feel like squeezing your hand. Why don't you put your arms around me and give me a big hoo? <laughs> Maybe you would like to test my loops. Hey, hey, hey. Oh, Costello, here's your girlfriend. Lean against her. Ah, ha, ha. Well, Costello, I finally caught you with your arms around another girl. You poor man's Tommy Manville. Ah, <laughs> uh, I mean, I can't help it. Miss Mucha likes me. She thinks I'm all the movie stars roll into one. That one in the back must be Andy Devine. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> Lena, don't say that. I want you two girls to be friends. Miss Mucho, say hello to Lena. Lena, say hello to Miss Mucho. How quiet the hellos are tonight. <laughs> <laughs> Miss Mucho, I've seen you in lots of pictures. Didn't you play the title role in Lassie Come Home? <laughs> How charming you are. I seem to recognize you. Uh, uh, where are you wrestling tonight? <laughs> Have you cats had your milk today? <laughs> Look, Miss Mucho, keep away from Costello. His arms belong to me. But his lips belong to me. His brain belongs to me. Wait a minute. I'm getting the short end of this. <laughs> Oh, Mr. Costello, I'll see you tomorrow. A hot manana to you. A veal scallopino to you. <laughs> hey, you know my French is improving? <laughs> well, Costello, this is the end of everything between us. Now, wait a minute, Lena. That wasn't Costello's fault, please. Honest. No, Lena. I can't help it if I have a winning personality. I can turn my charm on and off like a faucet. You must have a loose washer. <laughs> All I can hear is a little a drip. Oh, don't pay any attention to him, Lena. Uh, look, he isn't very, uh, <clears throat> uh, B-R-I-G-H-T. <laughs> yes, he does appear to be a little, uh, uh S-T-U-P-I-D. Yes. I heard that. <laughs> what do you think I am? A D-O-P-P? <laughs> <laughs> I'm through with you, Costello. I'm going back. Brooklyn and marry my old sweetheart, Mr. Schultz, the grocery man. Ah, oh, but Lena, Mr. Schultz is 70 years old and you're only 25. Didn't you ever hear of a May and December romance? Yeah, but he's going over into the middle of January. <laughs> There's no use arguing, Costello. This is goodbye. Oh, no, Lena. Don't. Well, if that's the way you want it, will you write to me from Brooklyn? You will write to me, won't you? Why should I write to you from Brooklyn? I'd just like to know how the tree is doing. <laughs> just as I thought, you always were a silly little twerp and you'll never be anything else. Goodbye and good riddance. Well, Costello, your girlfriend walked out on you. Yes, and I thought I was going to be such a big success in the coming year. I guess it's no use, Abbott. I might as well close up this beauty shop. I'm no good. I'm a failure. Well, you certainly are. 
Well, you don't know how to treat people. You, you don't know how to be nice to people, that's all. You're right, Abbott. And I'm going to go away. I'm going to go someplace and join an organization that will teach me to have good friends and do nice things. I'll join the Campfire Girls. <laughs> no, no, Costello. You yes, mean the... I will. Now, wait a minute, you can. I'm going to join the you Campfire Girls. You listen to me, girls. please. Please. You mean the Boy Scouts. The Campfire Girls are all women. You join what you like, and I'll join what I like. And now, Camel's lovely Connie Haynes repeats one of the season's most popular songs, Love Letters. The sky may be starless, the night may be moonless, but deep in my heart there's a glow for deep in my heart I know that you love me you love me because you told me so love letters So near while apart, I'm not alone in the night when I can have all the. is the mild and tasteful smoke of a camel cigarette meeting my T-Zone. The T-Zone. T for taste, T for throat. The zone where smokers test the smoke of any cigarette. Yes, the T-Zone. The taste of a cigarette on your tongue, the feel of its smoke in your throat, only your T-Zone can judge. That's how millions of smokers, forced to experience many different brands when cigarettes were scarce, found camels truly suited their T-Zones to a T. That fact is proved by factory orders for camels, now at the highest level in history. For camels, always a favorite with smokers everywhere, are today demanded by more smokers than ever before. C-A-M-E-L-S. For in smokers' tea zones, the zones of taste and throat, camels are the choice of experience. Well, come on, Costello, step on the gas. Hey, wait a minute, Abbott. Where are we going? Well, I'm not going to let you give up your beauty business. I'm going to show you how to sell beauty treatments from house to house. Now, now this looks like a good neighborhood. Stop the car. Okay, I'll stop it here at the corner of 2nd Street. Ninth Street is close enough. <laughs> what brakes? <laughs> the brakes are on ice skates. <laughs> yes, are now. Now, here's a nice-looking house, Costello. Knock right. on the door and tell the woman you'd like to give her a beauty treatment. Uh, but suppose she slams the door in my face. Oh, nonsense. The modern woman never slams the door in a salesman's face. Oh, that's different. Well, I'd like to sell you a nice... <laughs> Boy, is she old-fashioned. <laughs> 
Well, what are you knocking again for? I just want to get my nose out of the door. Ah, <laughs> uh, yes. Uh, whose line is it now? That's yours. <laughs> well, we didn't... We, it's all right. I got Thank it. you. We didn't do any good there. Go ahead. Hello. Well, hey, have yeah, it. We didn't do any okay. good there. I got it. We didn't do any good there, did no, we? No, no, no. Come on. I didn't do any good here either. Come on, Costello. Let's stop at this next house and see our old Scotch friend, Mr. Brown. Hey! <laughs> Was I lost? Yeah. <laughs> hey, there's Scotty Brown at the window now. I'll, hey, hey, I'll, whistle, whistle I'll, the I'll whistle at Scotty. Go ahead. Gladys, <laughs> <laughs> I wish you would not whistle in front of my house. Why not? Well, every time anybody whistles it wakes up my canary, he reaches down and eats another bird seed. <laughs> uh, Scotty, Costello. Costello is going from house to house selling beauty treatments. Hey, Scotty, how about let me curl your wife's hair for 50 cents? No, thanks, Lottie. I do that myself. I was just about to curl her hair when you come to the door. You can watch me if you like. Are you ready to have me curl your hair, Derry? All right, Scotty. All right, here we go. Chapter 27. As the poor girl descended the steps that led to the dank and musty old cellar, a long, hairy arm reached out and grabbed her by the throat. <laughs> that did it. That makes her hair curl every time. Good day. <laughs> well, how do you like that guy? Scaring his wife to make her hair curl up. Oh, that's nothing. He makes his kids cry to water the flower beds. Hey, <laughs> wait a minute. Hey, look who's coming down the street. It's our old friend, Officer Melonhead, the policeman. Hello, boys. Hi. Hey, I can't stop to talk to you now, Melonhead. I'm going from house to house selling beauty treatment. Oh, you won't stop at my house, huh? You wouldn't fix my wife's hair. You wanted to take her hair off and send it over to your shop. Go ahead. Tell everybody my wife wears a wig. Your wife wears a wig? Your wife wears a wig? Go on. Start a rumor. <laughs> Melonhead, your wife has lovely black hair. It's as black as coal. Coal, huh? Go on, say it. Say that you saw her shovel it into her snood. I know what you're thinking. Why don't you say it, Costello? My wife is ugly. She's got lips as rough as shoe leather. Melonhead, that isn't true. Your wife's lips are as nice and sweet and smooth. Oh, you found that out. <laughs> so you're the guy my mother-in-law saw running out the door the other night. Oh, now he's dragging my mother-in-law into this. I didn't even your mother-in-law. Sure. My mother not that's worth talking about, huh? Why don't you say it? My mother-in-law's uglier than my wife. Look, I didn't say that, Melonhead. I think your mother-in-law's beautiful. Get a load of this dope. My mother-in-law has a mustache and a three-inch wart on her nose. He calls her beautiful. <laughs> Look, Melonhead, I don't want to argue with you. I'm just trying to be a success in 1946. I just want you to have a nice happy new year. Oh, you want me to have a happy new year, but you wouldn't wish me a real happy new year. Okay, I wish you a happy new year. Just one, huh? I should have one happy new year, and the rest of my life I should be miserable. Okay, have two happy new years. Three, four, have ten happy new years. Oh, you're just throwing them at me. You wouldn't say them with feeling, huh? Oh, he's right, Costello. Come on, let's wish him a rousing, good happy new year. Come on. Okay. Happy, happy new, new year, year Melonhead. For he's, he's a jolly good, good fellow. fellow. He's a jolly good fellow. Happy new year. Happy new year. Whoopee. Hooray. these two guys. Here it is, four days before New Year, and they're both plastered already. <laughs> Come on, Pastor. Let's try one more house. No, I'm disgusted, Abbott. I feel like giving the whole thing oh, up. Oh, don't be silly. I'm sure we can sell a treatment of this house. Never here, right next door. Why, this is where Mrs. Niles lives. Go ahead, ring the doorbell. Okay. Why, hello, Mrs. Niles. Oh, hello, Mr. Abbott. I see you're out walking your big, fat bulldog. Oh, <laughs> oh pardon me. It's you, Costello. Uh, yes. Uh, look, uh, look uh, Mrs. Niles. <laughs> Costello is starting a new business, uh, giving beauty treatments. Yes, Mrs. Niles. You look like you need a little work done on your face. Oh, I do, eh? What's wrong with my face? Oh, nothing. I was just wondering how the horse looks without it. Uh, quiet, Costello. Uh, it wouldn't take much work, Mrs. Niles, to bring out your real beauty. Oh, do you really think so? Oh, quite right. Well, it was just a few years ago I had all the young men chasing after me. Oh, yeah. Sure. Oh, I wonder how I wonder how I could get them to chase after me again. Why don't you try carrying a ball in a rose bowl game? <laughs> Please, Costello. Now, Mrs. Niles, if you'll just sit down here in this chair, we'll start off with a nice egg shampoo. Yes. Come here, Betty. Chicken. Oh, 
all, we use only fresh eggs. Now, just sit back while I put Betty on your head. Go ahead, Betty. Do your stuff. <laughs> oh, a double yolk. Here. But I can't leave the house now, Mrs. Niles. I just noticed that your skin needs lifting. Oh, what do you mean? Do you, do you think my skin is too loose? Oh, no, it's just the opposite. Your skin is a little too tight. Here, I'll lift your skin and show you. <laughs> <laughs> my word, my skin is tight. Tight? Every time you bend your knees, your mouth flies open. <laughs> Come on, Costello, get busy. I've got the mud pack already. Yes, Mrs. Niles, this mud pack is my grandmother's special. It's her special formula. It paves the way to beauty. Help me put it on, Abbott. Here, I'll take one side of her face and you take the other. Okay. We make her nose the uh, dividing line. No, let's divide it in the middle. Okay. <laughs> well, there's mud in your eyes. Uh, my heavens, this mud is beginning to harden on my face already. Look, I, I, I can't move my jaws. Yeah, this stuff has got a lot of good qualities. Oh, but it's beginning to draw my face up. Get it off, you hear? Get it off. Well, wait, there's a couple of ways to get it off. Well, just tell me one way. You'll have to take your pick. Oh. <laughs> oh, you idiot. This stuff is as hard as a rock, and you said it would pave the way to beauty. Yes, it was my, grand my grandmother's special formula. Well, Costello, you shouldn't have used it. It's all your fault. No, it isn't my fault. Then it's your grandmother's fault. No, it isn't my fault, and it isn't my grandmother's fault. Then whose fault is it? It's Ass's fault. <laughs> Adam and Costello will be back for Camel Cigarettes in just a moment. And now, this week's salute in the new series of salutes to the men who won the victory. <laughs> Tonight, we salute the 34th Red Bull Division, heroes of Tunisia, Casino, Leghorn, and Bologna. In your honor, men of the Red Bull Division, the makers of camels, are sending to other servicemen still overseas 500,000 camel cigarettes. Each of the two camel radio shows thus honors the different units of the Army, Navy, Marines, and Coast Guard, a total of a million camels sent free each week. Camel broadcasts go out to the United States twice a week, are rebroadcast to practically every area in the world where our men are stationed, and to our good neighbors in Central and South America. And now, here are Bud Abbott and Lou Costello with the final words. Well, folks, that winds up our, our programs for the year 1945. Yes, friends, but we'll be back on the year next Thursday night. We'll bring you another whole year of Abbott and Costello. No, no, not that! I'm going to get a guy stand at the side of Wait a minute, wait a minute! Hey, wait a minute, fella. You've been pulling riddles on me every week. Now, tonight, I've got one for you. Go ahead, fat stuff. All right. What's the difference between a baby fawn, a diamond ring, and a jackass? I don't know. Well, a baby fawn is a little deer. A diamond ring is two deer. Yeah, what about the jackass? That's you, dear. Good night, folks. Happy New Year. A happy New Year to everybody. And don't forget, folks, buy victory bonds at your favorite neighborhood theater. <laughs> for another great Abbott and Costello show brought to you by Camel Cigarettes. And remember, try camels in your tea zone. See if they don't suit your taste, your throat to a tea. Here's a tip for the man who found a pipe in his Christmas stocking. Pack that pipe with Prince Albert for pleasure and every puff. Why? Well, Prince Albert is crimp cut for the slow, cool burning that breaks a new pipe in right. It quickly forms a good cake in the bowl, and in new pipes and old pipes, Prince Albert is wonderfully gentle and bite-free. For Prince Albert's famous no-bite treatment removes the causes of parch and sting before that grand, mellow tobacco is ever packed. Be sure to tune in next week for another great Abbott and Costello show brought to you by Camel Cigarettes. And remember, experience is the best teacher. Try a camel. Let your own experience tell you why more people are smoking camels than ever before. C A M E L S. This is Michael Roy in Hollywood wishing you all a pleasant good night for camels. Stay tuned now for the Eddie Cantor Show. 
This is NBC, the National Broadcasting Company.